So in the terminal, you're going to get access to a lot of metrics, right? One of the benefits is that it's a code-free solution. It handles, handles a lot of the math for you, but you need to understand what goes into it, right? So pricing the variance risk premium. This is going to walk you through how our most important data points are calculated and exactly how you're going to be using each of them in your strategies. The most important thing that we need to talk about is a, a relatively new change in the way that option premiums are priced uh, by option sellers. And that is that for a long time, there was a big edge in building your own model and comparing it to the market. But in recent years, the market has got a lot better at forecasting volatility. And so the odds of us doing vol targeting better than the implied volatility is pretty low. Not because it's difficult to do, but because when you build your own model, you end up getting an answer very similar to the implied volatility. So at first we would think to ourselves, well, that makes things a lot more difficult, but it actually doesn't because the beauty in volatility trading is that you don't need to be able to see the future to make money. There's plenty of cash on the table for simply being able to measure the present and doing it in a very good way. This is because, you know, volatility is a stationary asset, right? When volatility goes high, we can bet on it coming back down. When volatility goes low, we can bet on it coming back up. We can actually price like what is the average risk premium for an asset. By being able to do these things, we can actually build good systems that allow us to monetize vol trading strategies without needing to see the future. So to calculate volatility, we do a couple different things, right? Uh, to calculate variance risk premium, right? And let's, let's remember what variance risk premium is, right? It is the embedded premium or, or compensation for option sellers to incentivize them to provide supply into the market. If options were zero EV, everyone would want to buy them. Who wouldn't want that free hedge on their other book? So there is a premium there. And by measuring it, we can make sure that we're building strategies around the areas where there's the most compensation. The way we do this is pretty straightforward. Let's say today's January 1st and the implied volatility for a stock is 30%. That means the market expects an annualized volatility of 30% over the next 30 days. And what we could do then is we could see how much happens over the next 30 days, right? See what's the realized volatility over that time period. And then we could compare the two. Let's say the realized volatility was 20%. We could say that there was 10 points of premium embedded into that IV30 on January 1st. And that's the first step that we need to do to calculate variance risk premium. For a given day, we can calculate what the premium was for a trade on that day by comparing the implied volatility for a time period with the subsequent realized volatility that happened over that time period. And what we can do from there, and this is where it gets really cool, is we can run that calculation for every single day and build a, a time series model that shows us over time what is the average premium that we've been seeing, right? So we calculate the variance risk premium for each day using this formula here. And then what we're able to do is we're able to basically turn it into this time series, which you have access to in the terminal, right? We have a moving average on here and all that stuff. Important thing to note is that we have four years of data of it in the terminal, but we don't have the last 30 days because we're still collecting the data to build the data points, right? we need to know what the volatility was over the time period to calculate what the risk premium is. Now, some people may see that as a concern. That is not something you need to be worried about because everything that we're doing is going to be based off of this long-term average. What happens in a single day is a little bit up to chance, right? There's a, there's variance that happens. There's, you know, it, it's, it's not something that we could just make a decision off of what, what happens in a single day. We need to know what to expect on average, and that's how we're going to build up a portfolio we can trade over time. So having this four years is much more important than having this last data point over here. Now, if we just left you with this chart, there's still a lot of questions that you have. It's like, this doesn't show you what the average is, what the win rate is, what the recent premium is, and none of this is available to you. So of course, we have to go ahead and extract it, right? And you have that in the terminal. The terminal will give you this data uh, and extract it for you. So we have five key metrics that are gonna be provided for you right above that graph. The first is the average premium over four years, right? We wanna be trading tickers that have an established variance risk premium. So if our measurement over four years is positive, then we can say that selling options is likely to remain positive in the long run, that there's an embedded premium and it's something we could be trading. Next, we have the moving average, right? So the 10 day moving average. And it's just a complement to the average premium to give us a full picture of if there's a, a strong opportunity to sell right now, right? Has there been this risk premium recently? And what's the size of that? 
The third metric here, it's an important one, is the variance risk premium win rate. The nature of selling options is that you're supposed to have many small winners and the occasional big loser. So seeing a win rate helps us distinguish if the premium we're seeing in the average is just driven by a couple big events that worked out in our favor, or if it's actually something persistent we're seeing over time. We wanna see this high win rate. And this box on the terminal will be highlighted green uh, if the win rate is above 50%, to just give you a, a general visual cue of what's going on with it. Um, oh, by the way, for the average and moving average, uh, if they're above uh, zero, they will be uh, lit up green as well, or above one, sorry, uh, or above zero, yeah. Uh, the fourth box here, is the IV percentile. And this is one that's really important. Um, think about this, right? What we're basing some of our decisions on here is what the average premium is. And so if we're trying to calculate averages, it makes sense that we would want to see volatility be in a relatively stable and normal environment so that we can, that that average becomes very pronounced. So the IV percentile is here because we don't want to be trading when things are going absolutely bananas, right? Think about it like you were a car insurance company, right? Imagine you insure Honda Civics and you know that if there's a 30 year old person with a clean driving record, drives a Honda Civic, that's a black, uh, black car. And, uh, you know, you can probably charge them $180 a month in insurance and you'll make a nice little premium. You could probably do that indefinitely, but then imagine all of a sudden everybody started crashing their Honda Civics. You don't know if it's like a mechanical failure. You don't know if everyone's turning into zombies. You don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, it becomes a lot harder to price that premium accurately. And that's the same thing that we see here. When we're trying to extract this average premium, we want to see a normal vol trading environment, right? A normal IV percentile. So this box will be lit up green if the IV percentile is below 80. And of course, seeing something around like the 40% mark, uh, 40th percentile is, is a great spot. Um, the last box here is the median option volume. And this is here to help us figure out if we can trust the data we're seeing. When markets are very illiquid, it becomes very hard to actually extract a good implied volatility number because the bid ask spread is so wide. So seeing a median option volume above 5,000 uh, over the past four years is a good indicator to us that we can be um, trusting the data we're seeing and making decisions based on it. These five metrics that we just covered, if you have any questions about them, right, I'll pause for a second here and remind you, book coaching calls, reach out to me by email, send a message to the chat bubble in the terminal, reach out in the Discord. There's a million ways to get in contact. Do not let any of these numbers fly over your head. They are very valuable. We want to run good strategies. Please take advantage of the resources because you're going to use these metrics for basically all your VRP strategies, right? These are the core metrics of the platform and of running a good buck. Now that we know the metrics, let's actually talk about the workflow that you're going to use in the terminal. 